When I was a child, I interpreted through movement the famous Dying Swan solo from Camille Sanson's Carnival of the Animals in my living room in front of my parents. When I listened to the music, something changed in me. I became the swan. I could feel the agony and the torture as I resisted gravity and giving in to death. I was taken somewhere in between mortality and immortality. I convulsed and fluttered and slowly, gracefully gave in to that ultimate destiny. When I was finished, I looked up and my mother was crying. I knew at that moment I would become a dancer. I was six years old. And so I went through the process of becoming one and zoomed to the present. Here I am with 45 years of performing, choreographing, and teaching behind me. Movement exists in the arc between two deaths. One death standing still in the vertical plane, the other lying flat in the horizontal plane. The arc from standing to lying is falling. Within falling, there are endless possibilities of movement. This is not my idea. This is the idea of Doris Humphrey, a famous choreographer and teacher. Defying gravity through the exploration of eccentric control and momentum has baffled me, has intrigued me, and has defined me. And in doing so, I've spent a lifetime of falling. Falling is scary for people. But when the force of a fall is manipulated, twisted, and turned, and taken in another direction, it can be really exciting to watch, and even more exciting to do. People will naturally catch themselves when they fall. It's instinctive. Even when we trip, our arms reach out to brace the fall. In trusting that place between life and death, that out of control place, that place of nature and energy, I have found life. Gravity gets a bad rap, especially as one ages. Its power on our bodies is significant. We become afraid of falling. Falling represents pain, brokenness, and failure. There's a real fear of failure in today's society. When our children fall, we catch them rather than letting them learn how to land by themselves. It's the learning how to recover that builds resiliency. That place of falling and pain, failure and falling becomes the process for growth. Walking is pulling away and giving in. Movement with gesture, purpose, and focus is intentional falling. The arc, therefore, between two deaths becomes risk. In risking, we sometimes fail. In failing, we learn. In learning, we grow. Reacting, reflecting, responding through dance has made me a whole person. In my devotion to it, it has been devoted to me. For instance, when the man of my dreams dumped me, I took up tap dancing. 
the anger came out my feet. I made dances about the state of the world when I was most upset. For instance, money, money bags, a piece about the stock market crash and greed of the 80s. Or calling, a piece about a friend of mine who died of AIDS and impervious. A piece about no matter how much we screw up this world, the earth will live on in some form without us. I'm in my 60s now, and what my body can no longer do, my mind makes up for. In my aging, I've become less flexible, but my mind more so. I'm less interested in tricks and more interested in meaning. A single gesture can be as fulfilling as a whole dance. And so, I've come here today to tell you what 50 years of sticking to one thing has taught me. I suggest you substitute what your passion is in what I'm about to say. One, everyone can dance. No matter what your age, shape, ability, disability, or state of mind, if you can hear the music inside yourself, you can express it. And life is too short not to. Two, if you're lucky enough to find that one passion that you are really crazy about, that one thing, explore it from all angles. Be open to all things that involve it. Don't be fooled into thinking that you're too good for something or that you are above or below an opportunity. That's just your ego playing a trick on you. Three, do everything with love, especially teaching. You are not there just to teach the subject. You are there to help your student to become. You are there to pull out their beauty, their self-worth, their self-esteem. Nothing more. Your attention, your enthusiasm, and your love will help them to become the expressive beings they are meant to be. Four, creativity comes in many forms. Let mistakes guide you. Five, if you stick with something long enough, it'll start to give back to you. I've been asked to choreograph things I never thought I would. Operas, musicals, synchronized swimming, pageants. I've had the good fortune of listening deeply to the heart-stirring music in Carmen. I've seen bodies moving in unison as the sun set over beautiful Norway pond. I've witnessed my choreography make people laugh, cry, and think. There have been times that I've been on the brink of quitting, but that's when the magic happened. It started to need me. It starts to need you back. Not in the form you may have thought it would, but down a new road, a new journey begins. Six. Look for mentors. My mentors have told me to put my brains in my feet, to listen, to be aware of others, to stay alert, and to never look down. The dances I've been in and made 
have given me reference, helped me to experience the feelings of others, and made me whole. Martha Graham said, it takes five years to learn how to run, 10 years to learn how to walk, and 15 years to learn how to stand still. And I would add, it takes a lifetime to learn how to fall. Movement exists in the arc between two deaths. One death standing still in the vertical plane, the other lying flat in the horizontal plane. The arc from standing to lying is falling, which is movement. Until I am lying flat, I will continue to fall. Thank you.